cut in the video, we're doing a giveaway. Go. This hat. All you have to do, like, comment, subscribe. You got to comment 200K <laughs> subs in 2023 to enter to win this hat. Best hat ever. <laughs> Let's go. Good morning. It is Friday. We are back in Winnipeg, the home base. Or no, not the, not the home base, but the hometown. Um, we're back for a couple weeks at my dad's funeral. Um, I'm doing some training here until we make our final move to Kelowna because I am moving there uh, permanently. Um, so yeah, we're gonna run you through a day on how it's like to just get the workout done in between like a busy day, a busy work schedule because I do do a lot of work and I do do a lot of like online work, but I still get my workouts done. And I think this could help anyone and this could help you because when you have a lot of stuff going on and when we have a lot of stuff going on, like when we have calls, when we have stuff to do, but we need to get the work done, it's hard to allocate it in the day and find a time to do it. And I totally know that feeling, whether it being before work, before school, or after work or after school, and just finding the time in the day. So right now I'm going to a coffee shop to work and get some stuff done. Before my run at 11, I'm doing a 15K at around a 545 pace um, with Jordy and Ethan. So I need to get all the work done right now. It is eight o'clock. I woke up early to just get this stuff done for the rest of the day. So I'm not pressed for time to actually think about the workouts because I want to get it done and I don't want to have to leave it to the end of the day. I always find that if I leave stuff to the end of the day, it's like more, it gives me more like anxiety because I still have stuff to do. It's like that list I talked about, I talked about on the sun, on the Sunday hacks call is how to have more time management throughout the day to get the training done is you see the time slots in the day and the earlier, the better for myself because I get more anxious towards the end of the day to get the workouts done. And I think there's fully an attachment between like nervousness of not getting the workouts done in a day, um, especially when you leave it to the end of the day. So this is why I like to get the workouts done at the beginning of the day, um, usually before work, sometimes after, but it depends on the day. It's not the same every day, but um, yeah, today for, I'm just doing athlete check-ins. I'm giving a couple athletes a call for their monthly calls because I obviously talk to you guys or talk to the Hacks athletes one, one call a month to get the plans right, to see how you're feeling, and then to plan the Hacks calls um, with Marta because we're setting that up. So every Sunday we're having a group group call um and this and this uh week we're having another athlete on to share their experience on why they they, jo they joined hacks um and yeah get a nice walk in this is a like the outlet mall and then here are the geese there's canadian geese they're just coming back from their hibernation going down south sometimes get mad but yeah this is it Just finished work at a coffee shop. Got most of the work done. Most of the work done. Um, I try to get everything done, but I mean, I get caught up with stuff and distracted and you just have to like dial in and get it done. What I like to do when I try to do blocks of work is I set a timer and then try to do as much as I can within that time. Take like a two minute, three minute break and then do a timer again. Um, 
but that's what I feel like when I have my phone. I try to put my phone behind my laptop when I work so I can't see it in my vision. This is what my mental coach told me is, if you don't see it, you it doesn't distract you. So the less distractions when you're trying to do deep work, the better. So that's why I put my phone behind my laptop. But um, yeah, I did a couple calls with a couple athletes talking about the race season. And now we're gonna kind of plan the plans for it because I think that's the most important part is planning the races and realizing that what's our main race? What's a race? Like A, B, C, that's how we plan the races is, okay, race one, like our most important race is race A. And then the B and C, I mean, they're important, but it's more like a warm up for the race A. Um, and then obviously plan the plans towards that. Uh, but I'm just walking home again, getting some steps in. This is what I noticed with walking. Walking does so much. One of my friends, she asked me, how do I lose weight? I was like, honestly, go for an hour to two hour walk a day. And I guarantee you, you will lose weight if you just eat the same amount of calories and stuff. And she did obviously. But with that being said, um, yeah, the walking, it loosens my legs up a ton, especially when you're doing so much intense exercise, like run, bike, swimming and lifting. And then the walking, I feel like it just gets your hips, your calves, your back, just all loose. Um, but yeah, we're going to change at home and then going for a solid 15K run with Woody. So we'll see you there. Just got to Altia Active in Winnipeg with the guy, Jordy Woods, how you feeling? Uh, I'm not feeling very dangerous today, but I guess we'll see what happens. Let's see the new shoes. Yeah. Let's nice. go. Boston Adidas, 90 bucks at the outlet. Let's go. Big carbon. Let's go, let's have a good day out there today. Uh, I think once we get going, I'll start to feel dangerous, but as of right now, you know, feeling a little cold, but we'll start slow, finish fast. You know nice. what is, yeah. what are, what's the workout today? 15K. You're the coach today. Yeah, 15K. We're going to start slow. Um, hopefully keep the heart rate around 150. So. 150. Uh, yeah. Quick pace, 630 miles. 630. Yeah. There we go. Here's the fit. We got nice Brooks tights. They sent me. Um, I wore these really good. Obviously, the Brooks Hyper on Max. Um, it's kind of chilly out today. As you see, this is Winnipeg. It's gonna be really windy, probably around five degrees. Um, two, it's two degrees. Two degrees, okay. Two degrees, even worse, but let's go. Let's go. You got them? <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a bit sweaty. Yeah. Forgot the watch today, but we'll just play a Strava segment. Did you see that KOM in the airport? The what? That Strava segment in the airport? No. This guy, like, he went, I don't know, it was like Denver airport, and you had to sprint in the airport to get the KOM. <laughs> Shame that those have a hole in them. Yeah, Amazon. Shoot. Sure. Let's go. These are nice houses, though. Oh, let's go. Yeah. POV. Just started the run. Feeling good so far. This is Jordy Woods' YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like uh, 
kilometer 10, we pick up the pace, maybe go 4.30. Uh, don't see why not. It's been done before, we can do it again. So let's go. Boots are a bit dirty. We'll have to clean this, but we're going. Three can. Halfway, baby. How are we feeling? We're halfway done. Feeling good. Legs are a bit tight, like behind the ankles. Okay. Um, it's not too chilly, but we're gonna do a faster pace now. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll do like a couple, like 5k of 5:30, then 3k of five, and then like three more k to finish off the half. Uh, I don't know, like six. Yeah. To finish off with a half. Easy. Or we're just gonna get some electrolytes in us. And yeah, finish the run. Let's go. Let's go. For a kilometer 15, we're doing, we're doing 450s. It's very humid, it's like raining almost. So a little recap of the video just because the video got deleted of us talking about the recap run sucks i don't know because this video was all shot on my iphone i never really have done an iphone video on youtube it's always been like on a big camera but it's just so easy sometimes <clears throat> to just do it on my iphone so getting into the run we did the first 10k at an easy six minute per kilometer pace just to work on our zone two and our aerobic base and then around like 8k in i was feeling really good jordan was feeling really good so then we were like let's just do a half why not like it's only two hours um so then we just did the next 5k so 10k to 15k we did a 5 30 minute per kilometer pace and then from 15 to 18 kilometers we did a five we did around like a 450 to five minute per kilometer pace and then uh, the last couple, we just did uh, like an easy six minute per kilometer pace. So to average out like around a 540 minute per kilometer pace, um, here's a Strava right here. And if you have Strava, if you don't know what it is, Strava is an app where you post your workouts and other people can look at them and kind of give you kudos and just, I don't know, hype you up. I find that it really motivates you it's obviously an external motivator um but it's just cool to see the community around hacks because we have around 120 athletes in the hack strava and we have a top 10 leaderboard it's crazy to see the amount of hours people are actually doing um like callum beer it's sunday he's done 40 hours this week um i i think i'm around 10 hours and i'm like 30th in the group so it's actually wild to see the people on hacks and how committed they are but yeah if you want to join that the links below to join um the hacks uh strava group and just post your workouts like it's fun i think it's really 
a cool way to connect and a cool way to keep you accountable and just connect with other people doing those types of workouts. But overall, the run was good. Um, these runs are getting a lot easier. Um, like for me to say that we just do a half every Saturday and sometimes do a bike before. It's wild to me because I just started running like two years ago, but I think it just shows you how consistent you can be and how much your aerobic base and your running can improve so fastly, but you have to be patient with it at the start. I, I hated being patient with running. I just want to run fast. Um, but I mean, we want to run fast. We want to see a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, improvements fast but i think running teaches you a lot about patience and just showing up every day and stacking brick by brick and being consistent um but yeah that was the video that was the run we're about a month and a half away from our man victoria on may 28th and yeah this this next this next month i'll just be really focused on probably another training block because we have a solid four weeks we can do some more intense training and then taper for about a week um getting into vic the hills are crazy the elevation through the hills is a lot same with the run it's a trail run um so it's not gonna it's not a fast course at all it's not like galveston it's not like florida it's more of like a calgary penticton it's like a grinder course um and yeah it'll be it'll be a fun course it'll be a fun um, time. Um, but I'm going to really work on a lot of like hard cycling because the hills are going to be really hard, like extremely hard. They're not going to be easy. And then to do a good run off that bike, the run's not completely flat either. So it'll be a good test to anyone, like especially cycling. Um, I'm saying to all my athletes, practice doing a lot of high cadence work on the bike because you're going to be going up the hill a lot and high cadence at a high wattage, so just really spinning fast, and then working running off the bike. If you do any bikes, I would highly recommend for you to do run off the bike, because I do that all the time. I find that when we get off the bike and we don't know how to run, then it's it's super hard to learn that and to just do it repetitively after every bike. I try to get just on a treadmill or just go run for five minutes just to um, practice your legs getting moving off the bike. Uh, but with that being said, thanks for watching the video. Make sure to comment 200K subs in 2023 to enter the Hacks Hack giveaway. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.